In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your sister. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, Not be disjointed, but healed. 
Well, that's good to know. I thought this was a funeral mass, not a canonization mass. So I'll call the Holy Father. We've got a new saint. So there you have it. We have these extremes. The key is that's not what we believe. The key is that Christ came to save all. And this is very clear in sacred scripture. In our first passage from Isaiah, we hear of how the Messiah would come to gather all the nations, not just the Jews, but all the nations. St. Paul teaches that Christ died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who for their sakes died and was raised up. Our catechism teaches the church following the apostles teaches that Christ died for all men without exception. There is not, never has been, and never will be a single human being for whom Christ did not suffer. So Christ came to save all. He also has given us the means of salvation. This is why Christ founded a church to carry on his mission. He founded our Catholic Church. Granted, at the time of the Apostles, there's just one Christian church. The term Catholic was used in year 100 to describe this one universal Christian church. With that, though, Christ gave us the sacraments, these instruments, channels of grace, so that we could have the strength we need to live the life of a disciple, to walk the narrow path that he speaks of in the gospel. Christ gave us the Holy Spirit, who continues to inspire or continue from Old Testament into New Testament to inspire the authors of sacred scripture to write that truth that we needed for our salvation. The Holy Spirit guides the church to preserve, to understand, and to teach that truth. This is why our catechism is so important. It shows this beautiful continuum of teaching from the revelation of Old Testament, New Testament, to this present day and age. He gave us a leadership, so shepherds to help guide us. So the apostles were given the authority of Christ. That authority has been handed on from the apostles to bishops, to bishops, extension to priests, of course, the Holy Father has that special role of leadership given to St. Peter. We have each other too. And not just us helping each other. We have the saints praying for us, giving us their good example. We have the souls in purgatory praying for us. So we have this beautiful means to walk the straight path and get through that narrow door. It's not something that's prohibitive but rather, Christ has enabled us, by his grace, to walk the straight path. This is why the Second Vatican Council taught that the fullest means of salvation subsist in the Catholic Church. The challenge, then, is that for you and for me, we have to put it in action. Christ doesn't force us. And that's why Jesus said, strive to enter through the narrow door. That word strive in Greek is agonomatsa, agonized. It was a term that was used for the Olympic athletes who were training to put their best effort so that they had the good, go for the gold. It was used for soldiers training in hand-to-hand -hand combat because you want to win the battle. So Christ says, strive. We have to put it into action. We want to get to heaven. So with that, St. Paul says, discipline yourself. He says specifically, you know, strengthen those drooping hands and weak knees and so on. Discipline. Disciples have discipline. This is why we take the time for daily prayer. We go to Mass on Sundays. We continue to learn the faith. You parents especially have to create the home that is like the place where the Lord 
dwells, and your children are raised in the faith. In all, we're striving to go forward. Keep in mind, we don't want to look upon this as something just cultural. It's not something we just have to do, a set of rules, regulations, obligations, and so on. We don't want that. Because if so, if our heart's not in it, when we knock on the door, our Lord's going to say, I don't know who you are. Rather, we want to be the disciple. We want to walk the path. We want to get to heaven. Now, with that in mind, what about other people? So I've talked about our Catholic Church. Well, there's also salvation possible for others, too. The church does not condemn anyone to hell. We can by saints, but you'll never find the Catholic Church saying that this person is in hell. We leave all that up to God. So Christ's saving action radiates out. Picture it this way. If he took a stone and dropped it into a pool of water, we would see these concentric circles radiating out. And the strongest circle would be closest to the stone, and then it dissipates. So Christ is that one. And his saving grace that radiates out, first of all, is to that Catholic Church, because we have the fullest means of salvation. The sacraments, apostolic succession, sacred scripture, teaching, and so on. The next circle would be the Orthodox churches, like Greek Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, and so on, because they have all that we have, except they're in union with the Holy Father. But then go take it further, we have the Protestant churches. They're Christians, they believe in baptism, they have the Bible, so there's a means of salvation, but not as strong because they don't have, like, the Holy Eucharist. And then we go further, and we even say, well, the Jewish people, they're the people of the covenant. Would God put an Orthodox Jew who grows up in Israel, who really may have heard something about Christianity, but never been exposed to it in hell? Yeah. And then it goes out further from there. So the Second Vatican Council said, those who through no fault of their own do not know the gospel of Christ or his church, but who nevertheless seek God with a sincere heart and by his grace try to do his will as they know it through the dictates of their conscience, they too may achieve eternal salvation. So it's possible. But the challenge for us then is, if we're in the center, we have to go out and bring those people to the fullness. That's our role, not to be comfortable but to be the missionaries to bring others to the fullest means of salvation. But there are those who reject this. And again, the Second Vatican Council warned that those who commit mortal sin, deny the teaching, abandon the church, if men become vain and reasoning, to exchange the truth of God for a lie, and serve the world rather than the Creator, or else living and dying in this world without God, they're exposed to ultimate despair. So people can choose to put themselves in hell. So my brothers and sisters, the key here is that Christ came to save us. It's not a matter about numbers. It's a matter about each one of us. Realize that God loves us so much. He did send us a Savior. That Savior gave us a church. He gave us the means of salvation. We want to walk that straight path. By saying that, when we walk the path of Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life, we will have a peace of heart. It doesn't mean life's just going to be easy, because there's always going to be the temptations along the way. We may stumble at times, may even fall down, but Christ will be with us, and we'll have each other to help us. We'll have the saints, and we can keep on moving forward to strive to get through that narrow door. Therefore, no need to fear a passing from this life, but rather 
to look at life as a passing to that house of the Heavenly Father. One day we hope to be able to knock at that door and hear, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of my rest. May God bless you. Let us stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father and for all ages, God for God, life for life, to God to God, begotten of thy face, consubstantial of the Father. Through him all things were made, for our sin and for our salvation, he and I are in heaven. By the Holy Spirit was born of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was a great God and a constant God. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, and in accordance with his scriptures. He is sent into heaven, and is seen at the right hand of our Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and dead.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human kings. It will become for us the bread of flesh. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Amen. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. The great grace and glory of his name. For our good and good all the church. The Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things that sin, so that you might love in us what you love in your Son, by whose obedience you have been restored to those gifts of yours, but by sinning we have lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are the Lord of your glory, the Son of Christ. Blessed is he who comes to the name of the Lord, the Son of Christ. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them whole. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of faith. of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, Lord, and your blessed resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to your second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your own, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Agnes and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us on to the temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. We take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Grant us in peace.
behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
just a few announcements. Our poor box collection this weekend is for the poor players, cloistered community of sisters in Alexandria who depend upon others for their livelihood. Youth group will meet this Tuesday at 7.30. Enrollment in religious education classes has started. If you haven't done so, please enroll your children as soon as possible. We're having a food drive this month for Catholic charities. So the food pantry is low. You can place your donations of non-perishable food in the baskets outside. Also, they're taking Aldi gift cards. They specifically mentioned Aldi. St. Joseph's League meets this Thursday at 7.30. So all men of the parish are invited to attend. We begin with some beer and pizza and then continue our discussion of Father Calloway's consecration to St. Joseph. Let us pray. Complete within us, O oh Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth the Mass this evening. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us now. Be our protection against the wickedness and sinners of the devil. May God be 